already done. We are live now, I guess so. Good afternoon, everyone. It is 2 p.m. here in Chicago. My name is Elvin, also known as Poxy, and today we're going to be switching things up a little bit, doing a league casting, but not for our Division 1 team, but we're actually going to be looking at our Division 2 team. Uh, today, their matchup will be against University of Central Florida, the UCF Gaming Knights B team. Uh, the Division 2 team is currently participating in the uh, CSL Spring Playoffs, so I believe there's uh, like 64 or so teams in there to uh, get everyone in uh, for the JV talent to show up. And, um, Last week, I believe, the JV1 team had played against Ball State. Actually, I can confirm that really quick by checking online. Yeah, the Division 2 team played against Ball State University with a 2-0 win. So now they are on to the Round 2 bracket matchup against University of Central Florida. Um, I don't think... IIT has had any history in the league side with them. However, uh, the uh, team has played against UCF uh, in the Overwatch team, I know. So, uh, UCF Overwatch team did beat uh, IIT 2 0 pretty convincingly in the National League. Uh, but we're going to have to try to see if uh, the Hawks can bring it back against the Knights here in our league side of things. Um, today's roster for IIT, uh, is pretty diverse. We have Desil X here on the top lane, Gochu Didak as jungle, Shaded Eve in the mid lane, Zayan playing in the, and Wicked Scotty playing in the bot lane. Um, I wouldn't take these stats that they're showing here on the Lobby 2 series here, if I'm not mistaken, most of these players have been playing at a plat or diamond level over uh, throughout season eight. Um, unfortunately, this time we don't actually have a uh, like a roster breakdown that we normally do, just because of the uh, lack of prep for our content team, I guess. But um, looks like we'll be getting the games going on shortly, uh, and then yeah, expecting a pretty good series. But until then. Just have everyone hang on for a bit.
Alrighty, we're going to get ourselves into the pick ban phase now for these two teams as they go on their way. Uh, Illinois Tech looking like they're going to be playing on the blue side here, so uh, UCF here will be on the red. First bans here for IIT coming out with the new new, uh, likely aimed at UCF's jungler. Ian Siver now being selected for the ban for UCF, uh, going to be targeting Zayn with that as the AC. Uh, Tristana, interestingly coming out here as the second ban here for IIT. Um, yeah, going to be interesting to see what the first half of the picks are going to be coming out for both sides. You know, the standard I've been seeing have been mostly like bot lane jungler, but uh, first, but we'll see if that's going to be changing the top of here at all um, for this game here. Uh, the last ban here for IIT going to be the Braum here, so pretty diverse champ uh, ban here, not targeting a specific goal. As we've seen in some of our other games that we've casted here for League, how um, sometimes for Division 1 they seem to focus a lot of their priority bans on the top lane. Um, but the first pick's going to start coming out here for IIT, as real going to be going here for IIT. Uh, safe, relatively safe uh, marksman here to be able to get in and out of the situ those hairy situations. Uh, I don't think we talked about the other two bans for UCF. We had the uh, Scion and the Pike. Uh, Pike support, always nasty. Uh, but the Camille likely going to be seeing it here in the jungle or top lane here for UCF. Uh, the second pick going to be likely bot lane. Uh, we're taking ourselves into the zero timer here, but I don't know if that's a bug on me. Okay, I'm just going to pretend that was a bug on me because I saw the timer go down. But Caitlyn, all right, going to be picked. And again, relatively safe marksman, going to be able to have the range. Maybe going to be one of those resident sleeper bot lanes, but all will be depending on what we're going to be seeing here. Gochu Didak now going to be selecting the next role. Jax jungle potentially, or Jax top lane. Nevertheless, the Jax will be locked in. And yeah, taking a, I'm going to take a quick glance at what the stats are for currently, like for the collegiate. League of Legends Battlefire, just so I can keep myself up to date. Yeah, top pick champs right now have been Scion, Lucian, Braum, Ezreal, Sage. Yeah, so that's that's makes the most sense as to why these bans are coming out. Seems to be going along with the meta instead of as opposed to target banning. At least on Illinois Tech side. The Zyra ban going to be. Uh, excuse me, the Zyra pick going to be used here for uh, UCF as they're going to be looking at for the support. Going to be a lot of harass that she's going to be able to provide against Illinois Tech's Alistar here that's going to be, be on the Wicked Scotty. So uh, those WQs from Alistar are going to be having to be committing himself uh, to be at least taking the brunt of the damage likely. So likely, maybe IIT might be having to look for a more passive approach, expecting their jungler to help in for the ganks. Zyra with level 2, if she's able to get her E off to prevent any follow-up, it's going to be... And the Caitlyn Traps also will continue to delay any kind of forced initiation early game that we might be expecting from IIT. As we're moving on now to the second bands, the Karth is going to be coming out here for IIT. Uh, 10 seconds now on UCF pick out their last the echo being used and a silas going to be taken out as well interesting uh, i'm not sure if the division two team has had much practice with it um, from what i gather from their discord they've got some unconventional picks but silas has not been mentioned as one of them yet i'm actually not even sure if silas is playable for uh for the collegiate teams yet because of the of how long he has been released but i think he should be okay it's been at least two weeks so he should be a viable play. Nevertheless, UCF going to go for that. And IIT with their last ban going to be here on the Zac. Uh, we're going to be looking at UCF taking through for the first round pick. Uh, for second half, first pick here with the Sag Jungle likely being hovered right now. So if that's going to be what's going to be locked in, that will likely be a Camille top then we're going to be seeing. And the Sag Jungle will be selected here. And that is, you know, again, one of those fairly popular uh, pick champions that's been going on right now in the collegiate realm. Um, 
it, at least compare it looking at the Battlefly stats uh, out of the 133 games, Sedge being picked 110 out of those times. And then when she's not picked, her ban rate is 81 out of 136. So at least top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Final picks here for IIT going to be locked in shortly. We're going to be seeing the J4 coming out here. Um, and the Cassid in here for the mid lane here for Shaded Eve. Um, a lot of dive potential I'm seeing. J4 with his, Cassid in with his if he gets a good pick, Alistar Jax. So uh, seems to be like a very uh, divey composition. Not sure if UCF is going to elect for anything to kind of negate that push. Um, Maokai is definitely a pick, op, uh, a viable pick for that with his ultimate um, and his saplings to slow any approach down. Cass is also kind of there if they're able to get anything, but the Rise, as a matter of fact, will actually be the one that is going to be getting locked down. So, uh, I definitely take a look at UCS composition. They've got this singular target uh, pick available. Sejuani or Zyra or Rise getting selecting even one character will pretty much ensure a consecutive barrage of CC. Um, meanwhile, for IIT, if they're able to kind of match that with unprecedented levels of aggression, <laughs> they're just not even, I don't even care if you lock me down, I'm Alistar just going to break out of it, or Jax with his E, Ka Cassidy may be able to get any escapes out of his own, and as Rio as well, so pretty ex uh gonna be likely lots of team fighting that we can be expecting so for both sides as we are getting our way uh pretty soon to the games um yeah i'm, I'm gonna be expecting likely the early game just gonna be trying to see if the laners can hold on their own on the solo lane uh ucf probably you're gonna be having a slight advantage um bot lane in terms of getting to the level two um but that's going to be the J4 for Gochu Dudak, going to be in the jungle, and the Jax going to be in for the top lane, just going to be rocking away the minions. Uh, Camille versus Jax matchup, it all depends on who goes first, right? So, um, you know, things that we can probably be expecting, level 3 gank potential, um, Sichuani as a tank, level 3 compared to J4, level 3, I think J4 ends up winning out on that. Um, TP is going to be used conservatively as well for both sides, both mid lane and top lane equipped with them on both sides. Um, which is a nice change of pace as to what I've been uh, having to cast for some of the other teams where they just go for the top lane ignite aggression. But hey, um, everyone's got their own style, and so we got to respect that. But um, in terms of what we've got left here in the bot lane, the ignite here for the Zyra, again, just that level 2, level 3 aggression that will likely be seeing them to push their lane. But Ezreal should be fine, nevertheless, if he's just able to safely Q away uh, with his CS. Um, and yeah, I'll start with the exhaust to be expected. If they can get a good lockdown, just keep everyone in one place. So, you know, nothing too much to commentate on uh, in terms of summoners and, and uh, comp diversity. Seems like both sides have themselves pretty evened out. So it looks like a really good 5v5 fighting as opposed to some of the things that we're used to in collegiate with people just going for their comfort one tricks and comfort picks. But it looks like both teams are pretty well adjusted to playing for the five man game so as we're waiting for the spectate delay for the one minute um, don't really see too much of an active twitch chat this time as opposed to how we've sometimes had it um, we didn't really get too much of a notification if we were going to be streaming this game or not which is partly the stream team's fault i.e. me for not actually making the effort to get any publicity out on this because I was not sure what was going to be the situation uh, in terms of the games, seeing that we normally cast the Division 1 games, but they're in a kind of a loophole right now to see if they want to be, if they're going to be even having a match today or tomorrow based on some team communication. But, uh, you know, a good opportunity to always showcase the other talent that we've got going on here in the esports scene here for Illinois Tech. You know, it's not just our varsity teams we want to be showing off the spotlight to, our JV teams are equally just as important. Also, so they have a couple of them even have their own management levels of staff. Overwatch B has, you know, their, the coaches for the A team also take the time to help out for the B team in scrims and arranging all of that. Uh, even here in the league team, a couple of the uh, captains in the uh, league team dedicate some time to 
play games and talk about the game uh, with the Division 2 and Division 3 teams. So, um, all things good going on. So, we're going to get ourselves now into this game with this awesome overlay that I have spent at least 10 minutes to making as opposed to uh, what we've got before. Tried to spice things up a little bit with the... Uh, IIT and UCF logos and then a little title. You won't see it now because of the login screen, but I, I assure you that when we get in-game, it'll look very cool. <laughs> uh, definitely give me some feedback on this, though, as uh, I don't get too much of it from my team. It's only it's only audio that seems to be the real issue for me when it comes to streaming on my own. But, uh, yeah, now that we're getting ourselves into the banners... Uh, waiting time. We've got to uh, take, take a quick look at the runes. Klepto here for the real expected. Aftershock, Elstar expected. Aftershock, I believe, is going to be facing nerfs in patch 9.5. That hasn't been implemented yet, but uh, I was spending some time in solo queue and flex trying to see what was going on with the scene in that regard. And like the mages right now have the highest win rate, but yet they are nerfing the uh, tank runes so that may be very sad but yeah sona nami are like 54 53 respectively in terms of win rates really good for them right now but i don't know i used to be a mage support janet e-girl and uh season eight i just flipped the page and was like you know what let's just tank boy ourselves into here and i seem to prefer tank now but getting ourselves now into the game oh yeah here we go so works out nicely to have everything kind of put into order now um, and so definitely appreciate everyone for staying online as I uh, as we dealt with that three minute delay but uh, now both sides now loading up onto the rift and getting their items just a few more seconds until we launch ourselves into game one of the uh, Illinois Tech Division 2 team versus UCF Knights Gonna be taking a quick look at the first uh, approach. We're seeing pinks coming out, looking like both sides are going to be electing to cover all sides of the river and lanes. Uh, UCF having both of their bot letters go here, so leaving that bush a little bit exposed, but should be okay as Ezreal has had himself watching out for the tri bush. This entrance here not covered by IIT, however, both of the uh, top lane and mid lane here just hovering nearby. Pinks coming out for IIT saying that, hey, maybe we want to check out that place later. Uh, but at this point, not having yet any vision of where things are going on. Zyra's passive just uh, blossoming those plants all over. Um, but okay, looks looking like as the minions are spotting, both sides aren't really going to elect for any checks um gonna be seeing if we're gonna be seeing maybe a ward come out early it's pretty popular to see if they can go for the level two early scuttles in any case but um taking a quick look we're seeing both sides put into ward here well so good uh good map awareness for both as they're going to be keeping themselves in check not sure just such got caught in vision but she is and camille are going to be starting themselves with the red buff the bot lane here are going to be looking at the tri bush, and that's going to be important for IIT to not get themselves caught up in that. However, Zayan going to be walking himself right up to that, taking one more auto with the flash and the ignite. But go to Dedak here to save the day, just to deter any more follow up for that. However, old, both summoners for Zayan going to be lost here, and that's going to delay things a little bit for them. Again, one of those things definitely is that with that Zyra, you got to always watch out for that potential, but. Um, with that in mind, Sichuani going to be straight up following up with that to go in for the blue buff. Not sure if IIT had caught that with the ward that they had currently placed on there, but doesn't, nevertheless, doesn't look like IIT is going to have any follow up on that. Gochi Didak, though, on his end, is going to be finishing up the Krugs, possibly looking for any ganks of his own. Going to be caught up by this vision ward shortly. And the Sichuani is going to be looking at her own scuttle now, but with her completion of the buff, she is going to be spotted out by that ward, and giving IIT the awareness that she has been taking a visit inside their jungle. J4 himself going to be finishing up the scuttle himself, going to be seeing if he's going to be having any answer back, though. Um, Ping's coming out here for IIT as they do see a J4 coming himself around here, but not sure if they're going to go inside the jungle. Zyra cautiously putting herself all the way back here but IIT not really going to be able to have a response as they have to face themselves with a full wave the ward 
Jazz barely going to be calling out. J4 going to be caught in a tight position, but he's going to be able to get out just fine. Level 3 here. Going to be caught... Uh, not too far behind us. Sejuani did a little bit of irregular pathing to get herself from one end to the other. J4 still clearing out his bot site completely. We'll just keep... Hopefully be able to keep up the pace. Uh, level 3 going to be started off here by uh, UCF as they're, again, uh, able to get a good start base due to uh, that tri-bush initiation uh, with the ignite that we saw earlier. Desil Axe is going to be caught in a tight place, unfortunately, as he's already chunked to about 300 health against this uh, Camille here. Uncomfortable for him, unfortunately. Ping's coming out from UCF as they are getting the feeling that J4 has just gone back to base. Zyra herself doing her own clear, uh, excuse me, Sichuani doing her own clear. Of finishing up the Gromp here, but again, IIT likely, again, the goal here that we're going to be trying to see, that we're going to be trying to look to achieve is just to have that as real survive until the late game. Expect the jungler to be able to be there for the assist, so let go to DDAC and let the, uh, try to see if he can control the pacing of the game. Getting ourselves four minutes into the game now. Caitlyn definitely with a comfortable lead there. Uh, Jack's going to be showing some aggression of his own, but as he is able to get himself over, he's going to be taken really low, forcing the flash out of the Jacks. But I don't think that's going to be enough for them to follow up. That Camille does not look friendly, doing a lot of damage. Coach Didac does still going to be forcing himself out for the first blood, forcing the flash. J4 there to follow up. Well played from Gochu Didac as he ensures the kill there. Fully aware of his 1v1 matchup potential there. And a good start there for the Hawks to force it out there. However, a lot of Flash is going to be having to be expensed. Camille, not sure if he's going to look for a follow-up, but nope. Going to be uh, Ward hopping himself safely over just in case. Uh, with that first back, though, we've got the uh, Corrupting Potion... See what the Jax is going to be buying with his first back. Sheen, all right, respectable. Um, Zyra again, just still doing as much she can to harass, but taking a quick look at the mid lane again. I always have a really bad tendency to skip over that. Seems like Kassin has a slight lead over here, starting to use his first pot now as well. But going to be important to keep in mind that Sejuani, since she hadn't been approached, since she hadn't been uh, in that gang, she had the time to catch up on some CS of her own. Could be retaliating with a gank of their own, but the Rai's taking a little bit of chunked damage there. Cassian and Doe going to be playing it slow, letting the uh, J4, uh, or letting the uh, minions come up to his tower. But the wards coming out here for IIT as they are aware. Not sure if J4 wanted to go check his bush in the meanwhile, though. Desolax trying to see, I think he's trying to bait out the Camille to come down there, but IIT has got a pretty good idea of what's going on. Sejuani now coming on her own. A nice little knock-up dive there to try to see what she can get, but Jessel X taking a lot of turret damage there. Not going to be helping out, forcing the level 6 ult will just be enough to do it. And J4 with no ult of his own or Summers is going to be able to follow up with that. Well played from UCF to immediately retaliate. Unfortunately, the tower the tower being focused onto the Jax did not uh, not, did not help it as well, especially Jax not being level 6 for any of that MR, uh, slash, with his ultimate, I forgot what the name of it was, but, whatever. UCF though, um, gonna be establishing some pretty good vision control in the meanwhile, getting a good idea for what's going on with Emmy's bot, uh, excuse me, with Gochu Dex uh, right side jungle, really hope that he's actually gonna watch out for the wards. He is gonna cross over it. Not sure if he saw it though, uh, so they're gonna now have the awareness that J4 is gonna be completing his buff. Sejuani gonna be doing it her own as well, she's gonna be level 6 now. J4 now at least a level behind, uh, for sure, as uh, Sejuani just now has hit that level 6. So, so keeping ourselves in mind that Jax is going to be having to make sure that he can't really s suffer any more losses with any more delayed backings and whatnot against this Camille. Final level 6 to be able to take it on, but it's going to likely be having to let the Camille take control of the pacing. So trying to look for the fights where he can. Camille is actually going to be end up missing, but still you know, going to be winning out with that trade with that team that Jax only going to be equipped with the machine for this. Again, the aggression from uh, UCS bot lane here just going to be continuing itself. Um, Alistar not level 6, Zyra not level 6 yet either, but uh, 
again as we're going to be looking to <laughs> say it themselves in. Enough's enough. Going to be flashing in, showing a little bit of IIT aggression right there, but as their pings are coming out, we're going to be seeing the Infernal Dragon being started here for IIT. The plant likely going to be able to come in. IIT going to be seeing that Camille come in. Jax, uh, not that a nice uh, cataclysm going to be able to capture that Camille, but she's going to hurt. Does IIT have enough to be able to finish it off? It does, but at a price. Um, thankfully able to take that away as the Sejuani was uh, completing the Infernal Drake. But these trades, you know, are just a little bit, a little bit in in the end, still always just a little bit ahead in UCS favor. The E going to be caught out. Zyre, uh, Alistar not level 6, going to have to force himself to flash out, but he's going to be caught getting the knock up here from the Sejuani, forcing himself to E out. And just all of that damage, the Comets, the uh, Ignite, the red buff, everything, just adding up on top of his real is going to be actually enough to take him down in the end. Um, good play there for Sejuani. But she's going to be met up right in front of the J4. I don't know if they're going to have enough to take it. Again, all of that damage, but forcing the heal to come out here for the Caitlyn is going to be another kill there in their favor, though. And it's, things are starting to look a little bit out of control now for IIT's bot lane as they've got to be able to recover from those losses. The final piece of turret plating going to be falling down here for them. Um, all their lanes seem to be pretty put together, though. Yeah. So, Jax with this double red buff, not sure if he's going to be able to do much work with it now. Even besides the Tiamat, Ruby Crystal, and Lost Sword still going to be helping out. Camille just a little bit, trying to bait out the E, getting a nice little stun there. But, uh, again, just going to be seeing the Camille continue to push her advantage up, what she can do. So, IIT likely going to be having to settle for that late game, but J4 now going to be caught uh, with an empty jungle. And UCF doing good diligence to be keeping that, keeping the Gochu D that in track of what's going on. Ping's coming out from UCF as they do spot the J4 coming around. Rai's going to be immediately backing off. And again, we got to see those control. I want to see those controllers. I want to see the lens being used. But those two, both the J4 is going to be bringing themselves right in, getting a nice knockup to try to delay. Cast is going to be getting himself in here for a nice flash there to get the J4 out. But is Cast going to be having enough to finish? Well played there from the Hawks. One more auto should be able to do it. The pole with the auto going to be getting two kills there. Well followed up from uh, Gochi D deck and Shaded Eve there. Uh, Camille not with a TP available to help out. Good response there for the Hawks. Uh, Alistar going to be taking a ton of damage. Not sure if the intent is to try to just hold out for the first tower, but at this point, it is a inevitability with 450 health left. Oh, uh, Zyra just finishing her support quest to get her uh, Eye of the Frost, whatever thing you want to call it, completed. When she gets back, she's going to get three words to help her out. Um, and again, this lane push looking like likely that... Uh, Caitlyn Zyra are going to commit for this first tower. IIT, again, can't really have to follow up. Alistar already taking too much damage, and yes, this will ensure the first tower here going to be in UCS favor here. Going to be getting them some extra gold. How much does that give again? I forgot. Anyway, uh, the shot... Things to mention though, that double kill that we saw earlier with the mid and jungle did provide some shutdown gold. So Johnny with 450 on her name. Uh, we're likely going to be probably seeing some shutdown going on to Caitlyn herself eventually too with that nice 30 CS advantage. So again, this bounty system that Riot's employed is interesting to see to say the least in terms of uh, what uh, what the potential is in terms of like how the game can progress. Um, you know, now that they have the bounty on their head, J4 has an incentive to at least show up in the bot lane now. Um, but in terms of the 1v1 matchup, uh, here in the mid lane, both mid laners staying pretty consistent uh, in terms of CS, but we're seeing a quick lane switch now as U UCF completed their first tower. Now the bot lane transitioning to the top. IIT there to reciprocate though, so good communication from both sides to keep themselves in mind of that. But as they clear out the uh, control ward for this Rift Herald, pings are coming out from IIT. J4 though here with his cataclysm catch out, a nice little dive in to just keep all keep that rise inside the zone. Pings coming out from UCF as they don't have the vision really to know what's going on there, but UCF going to elect to not continue with that, going to let the uh, Herald reset. 
Meanwhile, though, Jackson to Camille going to be still going butting heads a little bit. Jackson's doing a nice cashing back a little bit in CS, so that's good. We saw him with maybe like a 10 or 15 deficit earlier. Uh, unfortunately, kind of misplayed there, and I don't think that the Jackson was wanting to go for that 1v1. Camille might be looking for that all in, though. A flash there to be used, and well played there from the Jacks. Okay, that's actually so good. Actually, hold on, let me replay that. Yeah, 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 it's what, it's, okay, so he flashed in, I think, to avoid the E knockup damage. Gotta watch it one more. Okay, so flash. Uh, oh my god, 26 HP. <laughs> and those are, and that's, uh, that's nasty, to say the least, in terms of that 1v1 matchup, but good on Desolate Axe to IIT to still continuing to show resilience despite the, uh, despite the early uh, deficit uh, that we saw from a couple of those missed ganks. Good to see IIT still being progressive towards their uh, towards the game, even as we kind of transition ourselves a little bit to the mid game now, 14 minutes in. Um, in terms of gold advantage, yeah, Caitlyn with a comfortable 1.5k lead, and that'll be sufficient enough with that 20-ish CS lead. However, though, uh, these objectives that UCF is keeping a tight control of are going to be those little things that add up. Pink's coming out from IIT, as they got the feeling that she's coming out. J4 is going to be walking over that ward, but she's, Sejuani, going to be ending up to be able to secure that dragon herself. That a fire, an inferno, and an ocean going to be definitely helping out. Gochi D definitely going to be needed to do a better job of keeping a better track of where that warding and vision is coming from, though. Uh, but UCF again just continuing to show all of that aggression. Then again, their bot lane, Alistair going to try to see what he can do though. He's a little bit too far, forcing the ult out early from Desira, leaving the Alistar still relatively healthy. Could could be in IIT's favor. But Gochu Didak with his own, keeping himself rooted, but is out of the tower range. A nice ult there from the cast to get herself out. Gochu Didak going to be continuing to get himself, forcing the TP out to Camille though. That play working out in IIT's favor, forcing out the summers, forcing out the ults, uh, going to be helping things out. But uh, UCS bot lane, though, continuing to push the advantage where they can. St that harass, not ready to match that yet. Wicked Scotty with not a lot of MR available, and uh, Zyra going to be looking at that Leandry's uh, pretty soon. It's going to be likely a big harass if IIT doesn't have to answer. Sejuani now going to be looking at the solo Herald. Uh, J4 here, though, not here to help out for that. Looking like it'll likely be falling here for UCS favor as they continue to push for objective control. IIT confident in their fighting matchup, but likely not ready for their 1v1 matchup. She is going to get herself out there. Gochi Didak taking a gamble here though to keep himself in lane trying to see if Camille's going to be looking for any of those one more, any more of those 1v1s. But again, I think UCF wants to be Definitely now starting to respect IIT's uh, fighting prowess, but Ping's coming out as they want to be looking at this. Looking for the die, forcing the E out. Gochu D not going to be forced out with the ult. Well, the, fo the flash follow up actually going to be working in, uh, going to be having the Camille follow right in after. And that is how that ult works, unfortunately. But Desil X is going to be caught right here with the J Force. He's going to be starting to get cornered in. A plant, though, to help him get himself right back out. Desil X now, yeah, unfortunately, the J4 with some good uh, initiation, but unfortunately not tanky enough to be able to uh, take on the full brunt of Camille and those tower shots. Rift Herald now employed for Sejuani, she's going to be looking after this blue buff light, going to be putting it down onto the mid lane. And I, again, the objective control is starting to push that lead ever so slightly in their favor. Even with this 2.5k gold lead, it doesn't look like too much, but... Wicked, Sc for, uh, <laughs> Wicked Scotty forcing Zayn to take all of that in. Uh, questionable as a support, but he is low himself. Kind of scared uh, for it as well, but the uh, Rift Herald not being put down yet. UCS still maintaining so much good vision control. They know what's going on. IIT is 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 has in mind. Uh, 
Ezreal's uh, ult going to be chunking down that uh, Caitlyn just a little bit, but pings are coming now. IIT needs to start deciding what they want to do. Desilex still resolutely keeping himself here in the top lane. Kassadin going to have to likely look at rotating himself top. Can't be here mid, but the control again here for UCF is dominant in terms of keeping what's going on. This ward here has still been untouched despite having IIT cross over it multiple times. I want to mention that as well. Uh, Pings are going to be coming out. J4 is going to know that they're that they do know about J4's presence. Camille going to be backing herself right out there. Uh, but again, I the uh, UCS bot lane continuing to press their advantage. Another little bit of a bounty in her on her head with 450 gold finally showing up here for the CS advantage here, um, pushing the lead now to above 2k gold, forcing here the Q. But Kayla going to be flashing herself right out. Forcing the exhaust though, a lot of damage coming through. I don't think IIT is ready to follow up with that. Forcing a lot of summoners there for them though. Is to be finally trying to see if IIT could take that matchup. Expending the summoners there for UCF. But that's likely going to be what the f Okay, I'm not gonna question that. Uh but again, UCF with the objective game control gonna be pushing on their advantage past that rift hero uh, with the rift hero. IIT's members too low to take the fight, gonna be getting another tier 2 now, and if they keep staying here, they're, they're gonna be getting likely at least half of this tower chunk, because IIT's members are still not ready to take this fight, the only member that's relatively healthy is the J4, and yep, getting that first tower, IIT just not ready to respond, Flash coming in with the knockup though, another Flash from the Zyra, not gonna be catching anyone else though. Gonna be ensuring that the uh, first inhib now is gonna be cleared out here for UCS favor, and another objective control here coming out here with the Cloud Drake, leaving, I, uh, leaving UCF in full control of the situation with that 4K gold lead now as we approach almost 20 minutes into the game. TP going to be used here from the Desolate X to try to see if he can force down the tower. Looks like he's probably going to get it. Camille uh, not having her TP available. Rise doesn't look like he wants to expend it as he's finishing up the mid lane here. Pings though coming out as they want to be looking out for the Rise. I don't think that damage is going to be enough to cut through and the silence has not come in through from Kassadin either to stop it. Um, Wicked Scotty going to be doing a little bit of his own vision control. Going to be spawning out this control where Pings coming out as the Baron is getting itself approached. Why aren't you finishing it? What? Finish it! Oh my god. Why are you scared for her? Ugh. You know they backed. It's not like you can time that. Um, and in any case, IIT now having to deal with these super minions. UCF still with co uh, vision control all over here in the red jungle. Now going to be starting to put itself into the blue. The blue buff going to be placed here for Kasten. But uh, keep yourselves in track of levels. J4 Smite is stronger than Sichuanis, so could lead to another, could lead to some interesting situations. But again, UCF trying to pace themselves just in terms of objective gameplay. Caitlyn going to be nasty herself, finished with the stag ship, finished with the IE. If she's going to start looking at armor pen next, she'll just get, sh they'll get shredded even with the ninja tabbies uh, on the J, f on the Jax, Jax J4, Jax J4. IIT not with a lot of options, but Dustle X, you know, again, he uh, used his TP earlier for the top lane, so they're likely going to have to be keeping him there if they're going to have any chance of contesting Baron. Meanwhile, Cassando with his TP is going to be trying to elect to keep himself at pace with the Rise as he tries to continue pushing up. IIT trying to do what they can with the vision control, but it's going to be uh, not looking too good as you're going to be leaving Dustle X alone to his devices. Camille with a uh, little bit of an approach there. Again, objectively just looking to take things slowly but Camille gonna be finding a pick here onto the J4 forcing a lot of ultimates and that true damage is gonna be too much to be able to contest the uh, knock up from the ult and even with that E again I, I just I think just not playing as a team of five here for these games and UCF is showing off their five men ability uh, playing consistently as a team here that's likely what will be leading to their victory here now as we go on to the 22 minutes. Now with two in hips open, only likely only like one or two ways here for mid lane, but it's still going to be likely too much for IIT to handle to see if they can look for a Baron contest as UCF instantly transitions themselves here for the Baron. 
Gonna be spotted out with the ward, but uh, the two control wards just to have a little bit extra insurance there as they start themselves here. High team really not really at a, pay at a place where they can look for a contest here. And so at this point, we just gotta ask ourselves, you know, ooh, that's real old coming in close, but not gonna be enough to get the steal, unfortunately. Uh, Spike coming in through there, thankfully, from the Sichuani. But it's, it, it, it's, yeah, it's, um, you know, we saw a couple of times where IIT is able to win those fights 1v1. They're confident in their ability to fight, but I'm not too confident in their ability to 5v5 team fight. Um, we saw the attempt that they tried to do in the mid lane, try to see if they could get the shutdown on Caitlyn, but Caitlyn with her summoners available at the at the ready, uh, just instantly able to get herself out and then Zyra laying out all of her own AP damage. Now with the Leandries completed, both bot the, both the bot, the bot lane for UCF here with no kills to their name, as Rio and Alistar haven't even gotten their first kill or assist on the board yet. And again, you know, that's, I don't know if I, we can put that all entirely on the, just that level one tribush. You know, a lot of it relies on Goji Dex's ability to gank the Camille though. What? Oh my. Forcing the Cataclysm here. Ah, uh, Sejuani not, oh, Sejuani not, not going to be landing, but IIT doesn't look like they're going to be responding for that. The ult from Sejuani whiffs. Nevertheless, though, objective control is here in UCF's favor as they have another ult going to be using. Casting going to be taking the hit of it. No ults available except for Zyra ult, I believe, now for their side, but it's going to be. Regardless of the case, IIT is still ready to fight, forcing them to try to see if they can burst out the Ezreal, but it's going to be one more auto that does it in, forcing the old flash out from Wicked Scotty, but the follow-up is there to press on with Kate's auto just harassing that backline. The final inhib now falling down, uh, even with the mid inhib respawn, IIT looking like they're going to be having to fall down here in this game. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit to see if that anything else happens. And at this point, kind of KDA, and okay, game one. All right. Yeah, taking a quick look at the damage charts. And again, props to their bot lane. Oh my lord, look at that. That's disgusting. That's, ugh, you know, you, don't, you hate to see that. Um, you know, I, I, I like the mid jungle synergy that they had going on to shut down the rise for IIT, but the bot lane just. Suffered too many losses. Um, uh, Desil X had his moments uh, with a couple of those 1v1 situations. Um, but again, just a couple of those misplays and a lot of that objective control uh, for them led to the victory here that we saw for uh, UCF here. Yeah, a couple of the dives that we saw, I, I like the aggression from the J4, but I think it needs just a little bit better coordination, maybe letting the J4 uh, initiate so that he can take the hits or something, or maybe having um, trying to wait out the abilities or something, but unfortunately, that's not going to be enough to do it for, uh, for IIT, so we're going to be looking at uh, now game two. As the uh, Hawks now have their backs to the wall, I believe the game setup is a best of three. Um, UCF Knights now leading at 1-0. and uh, I guess I can switch these logos up a bit. Because now UCF will be electing to take the blue side. And IIT here will now be at the red. Uh, in terms of picks, yeah, it's just the uh, Kate Zyra bot lane is just choking it's it's literally the the term i can use to describe you have very little chance to ensure any kind of picks especially with alistar you're going to be you're going to be the first one putting your head and hordes right there to a bazillion saplings uh excuse me seed flower whatever damage and caitlin's autos from from that range you know the only chance you have is maybe like a flash q initiation if you get lucky if desire just like tries to push your advantage but ucf showing good discipline uh you know after a couple of those 1v1 fights, they were like, all right, maybe we should like play as a team and uh, not uh, look for 1v1s, but IIT a little bit with that solo queue mentality. Um, you lo that's uh, gonna be one of those things that transitions between Division 1, Division 2 teams, but um, getting ourselves now to the big pan phase. So that means a switch. Gotta change UCF to 1 now too. Uh, UCF now leading one, going to be going for the Sivir ban again. 
IIT going to be seeing if they're going to be looking at any focused bans on what UCF showed. I think it's winnable uh, for IIT. They have a winning situation. I just don't think that they have they have to do a much better job of their objective control. They have to do a much better job with their vision control, and then when they go for their ganks, they just need to, that's the team communication that has to be flawless uh, in terms of just laying, and, and and that leads to the first two, you know? Okay, Sejuani took this dragon. Now we know we can go for top lane safely, you know? And then the vision control, you know? I clear out this ward, they know I'm here, I can't look for the gank, right? It all kind of feeds into each other in these kind of situations, but um, we are going to be seeing a, finally a focused pan coming out here. Focus towards ninth planet Pluto on the Zyra, uh, giving IIT giving credit to UCS support here. Uh, I think he's like a D3 or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. D3 is the same thing as P3 in support for uh, solo queue, and that's coming from support lane. Uh, Pike going to be coming out here for the ban. Is real going to be banned out here for IIT? Interesting. Uh, not sure if that was intentional, but. I don't know if they know if, if uh, Cheapify or whatnot has got some of his own. Oh, the Silas though coming out here for UCF. Uh, gonna be interesting to see if they're gonna be what they can do with that. See, okay, you just gotta when they first pick Silas, you just gotta pick all of the worst champions that the R will never will never benefit from, like Karma R, Elise R. Uh, I'm trying to think who else has like useless R's that would not help Silas. That's a, uh, that's a, that's a thing I'm gonna look up. Maybe the Singe? Oh yeah, Jax R as well, I guess. Could be, it's Alistar would be good for like team fighting situations, I suppose. Uh, I wonder if you take Corky's ult, do you only get one rocket? I have no idea. Uh, it's my lack of league knowledge shown there. But uh, nevertheless, going to take a quick look at what we've got going on for the picks and bans because I'm a caster and I'm supposed to focus on that. Uh, the Jace top coming out here for Desolex, the Lee Sin on Goju Dedak, a signature champion. Uh, I am, um, I know based on uh, his experience that he has played on the Division 1 team last year, now in Division 2. So going to be seeing that coming out, the Sejuani and Ko Kaisa coming out here for UCF as uh, the dive potential is something that they're looking at their end. So instead of getting themselves just with that harass, pushing themselves as this one unit, maybe some flashy plays that we'll be seeing from the Silas and Kai's to get themselves right in to the fight. But uh, Shade and Eve now on the last pick. I wonder if they're going to save their bot lane for last. No, nope. we are going to be seeing the Jinx coming out. Jinx? Interestingly enough, I don't think she has that much of a play rate in uh, Collegiate Battlefy. Yeah, Kaisa has a 79 on 133. And then what's Jinx's win rate right now? Fifty-two point nine nine percent tier one. Seems to be the same as what she was in 9.3. Not that much different. Huh. Alright. Anyway, last couple bands coming out now for here from both sides. The Janna gonna be. Oh. Alright. Uh, Resident Seeper. Uh, Janna ban. Echo ban. Uh, likely focused on the mid lane here. I don't see a world where Catherine gets picked here, though. No? It's not like you. I don't think that's what IIT will be trying to look for, but. Nami ban. That's uh, respectable. That's Nami with as one of the, I believe, top two or three win rate supports now. Uh, so um, she's has is uh, there's a Reddit post about how Nami Draven has the is the strongest duo right now in uh, EU Masters and Grandmasters uh, uh, solo queue. So I was in Nami main season seven. It's always fun to play. You have the heals, you have the CC with their bubbles, you have the E for the slows, if you feel like just put, laying in some damage. Um, but uh, 
now mid lane and the support left for IIT. Now just mid lane as the Braum is going to be picked. And Braum uh, is uh, fairly better right now uh, with a 119 out of 133 pick rate uh, in the Collegiate Division 1. Uh, the third most right behind Cyan and Lucian. Speaking of Cyan and Lucian, maybe we'll be seeing that here for the top lane. Uh, nope, that, excuse me, they banned that for UCF. Thresh going to be selected here for UCF. So again, the level two uh, is crucial uh, for Thresh. If he's able to get his QE, he can just wail in like a half bar of any any, any champ with that. But uh, the last pick here for UCF will be to cast mid, uh, leaving Illinois Tech now with the decision for what their mid pick will be. Really only one tank I can see, because I don't see a world where Gochi Didak Fleecing builds any kind of tank item. Uh, two tanks available with the Thresh and Sichuani for UCF. Galia maybe? Garen? Oh, good the lord. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Hey, if IIT is going to go out, we're going down with swinging, dude. I'm, I'm all for it. Desil X go with the Garen. Hey, he showed himself even with the uh, item deficit to take Camille head on with the 1v1. So if he's able to come up on top again, props to him. You know, I don't judge champs except for Jace Jungle. But uh, the uh, going to be trying to see what comes out of it is uh, with the two TPs. What? Okay, that must this pick. Uh, <laughs> Darn, I was ready for Garen. I was ready for Garen. I was ready for Garen. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so it looks like the uh, placement pick is actually being used in place. So we're not actually going to see the Garen top. We're going to be seeing the Rumble top. Uh, that's fine. But um, not sure if they're going to go for the same band. So we're going to jump ourselves right back to the pick and band select. But looks like I think the only champ out of place was IIT's Garen. Is, was actually a placeholder pick to be used for Rumble. Damn, I really want to see Garen used in... Uh, Used in uh, in collegiate. That's so that will be Rumble Top, Leeson Jungle, Jace Mid, Jinx ADC, and Brom support for IIT, Silas, Sichuani, Cass, uh, Kaisa, and Fresh. Getting ourselves now back into pick bands. We're going to be going into the three minute delay in a moment. Uh, I guess while I wait for that, I can do a little bit of IIT biography. I don't have any slides prepared, but I'll just talk about it since I don't really have too much uh, content. There's always another way. Oh, they just did random bands with Aatrox Annie? Okay. <laughs> the Camille was a misclick. Who sang that? Someone from UCF, maybe? Uh, I don't know anything about this guy. I'm gonna assume it's someone from UCF. Camille was a misclick or he misclicked in game. I'm just gonna assume that he misclicked in champ select, yet he was still able to win a 1v1. Well, hey, misclick could, is uh, just three letters off from click, so all good things, all good things. Um, as we're gonna be getting ourselves into the game shortly, we'll take a quick break. Uh, 
as we wait for the, the uh, spectate to delay, but we'll be back probably in like just a minute to start talking a little bit about the game. Until then, uh, tune in for uh, game two coming up shortly. Alrighty, we are back. Let me just take a quick break there, get my stuff together. Uh, got about a minute left uh, for the spectate delay, um, but as we wait for it to get started, uh, we got the ignite gun bomb I like, uh, and the ignite on the thrash. So if we're looking for all kills going out here, two v two, straight up matchup, tanks v tanks, ADCs versus ADCs, as it should be, as it should be. There should never major support should never exist in the game. Uh, I guess uh, we can do a quick little bit of background info on the team. I do have some stats. So, Decil X, uh, also known as Alex, is a fifth year uh, from Tinley Park, Illinois, studying computer science. Uh, Gochu Didak, also known as Jinho, uh, studying applied physics from Korea. Uh, so, that's the uh, Korean imports coming in. Shaded Eve Omar, a second year computer science. Uh, Zayan, also his real name is also Zayan, uh, is a third year ITM from Houston, Texas. And we've got Wicked Scotty, uh, also known as his first name is Scott, and he is also a ITM information technology major from Chicago, Illinois, though, as the fourth year. So pretty uh, veteran out team we've got going on here. But getting ourselves now into the game, taking a quick look at 2D runes. Uh, is it showing up on stream? Yep, alright, here we go. So, the grasp is going to be on Silas. Aftershocks, so on the phase. Okay, uh, press the attack, Kaisa. Aftershock, thresh. All to be expected. Guardian, good. Elastic Tricute, Lee Sin, Electric Tricute, of course. Arcane. Interesting, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seems pretty standard for me. But we're going to get ourselves loaded into the rift. Uh, now, UCF going to be on the blue side, IIT, now with their backs to the wall, trying to see if we can force ourselves to a game three, going to be here now onto the red side. Um, you know, I think the Hawks have, have the ability to do it, we just got to work on that team communication, right? You know, are we putting these team practices to use? Are we trying out those things, talking to each other as a team? That's what makes and breaks it for uh, here in collegiate world. Getting everyone loaded up and getting those first items. Uh, rumble items, please. Yes, sir. 
Uh, Rumble now going to get into Dorans. And a pot. But uh, they're going to be a little bit late as they get themselves onto the rift. Hopefully, UCF doesn't get any nasty picks with that. Though, the silence is also relatively behind, so I don't think we're going to have too much of an issue here, though. Uh, Coach D, that could be running himself right into there. He's going to start with the Q. Ooh, nice little sidestep to avoid the cast pool. Ping coming out. Thresh rumbling his way. Or, see, half feet. Yes, okay, he has feet. I thought he floats for some reason. Like ghost, you know? But, okay. Kaisa does not have a skin, I think. Minions have spawned. IIT skin. No skin. No skin. Skinned. That's Pool Party Rumble, right? I think it is. Uh, whatever. Uh, getting ourselves now into the game with this buff starting to spawn out. IIT putting conservative words over it. Oh man, look at four pings coming out to keep that in mind. But, you know, Leeson with his potential to, uh, to gank early, to get early jungle steals is immeasurable. IIT looking like they're trying to bait out, give UCF the false impression that IIT has been going for that, uh, approach. But level two Lee Sin gank what could be happening. The W coming in here, the autos, the slow Silas here with the flash though, trying to put it out and well played there from the Hawks to get things started with that red buff approach. So trying to be pathing herself right now, level two to finish off the scuttle. They're going to be spotted out by that ward. Ping's coming out from IIT as she's going to be taking a gander inside that blue jungle. But IIT with that level, excuse me. UCF with the level 2, it's going to be running right into the Braum, forcing the heal out, that's going to be a lot of damage. I don't know if that's, I don't think that's going to be enough, but just barely does it. Uh, please don't run into this, Ronnie, like, no one wants that. Uh, it's a gamble, she goes for it, but uh... Okay, Ping's coming out from IIT, they did know that. Jake's going to be starting her level 2 right now, Lee Sin going to be helping himself to that blue buff. Uh, there's a ward there, dude, please. But, uh, not like UCF is going to have anything to say about it, unfortunately. Something I do want to see is that, is Braum going to try to see if they can catch this Sichuan out of play? She's been helping herself now to two camps. Now her second camp at here at the Wolves. Um, first blood on Leeson, definitely going to help things out, but doesn't look like they're going to do anything about it. Level 3 coming out here, and she's uh, been... Jinx helping herself to allow that CM. Staying relatively not too far behind, only a, what, three CS behind, I believe. So, um, Sajrani, as she has just finished her stuff, going to be uh, not too far behind. Hook not going to be able to land. Keeping uh, Jinx still in the game. Braum now level 2 going to have his uh, shield, I think, ready as he went for Yep, QE. So that's always going to be fun. Uh, gonna be help, especially helpful against any hooks. Sejuani though, gonna be coming herself around Gochu Didak with his own, a nice little ward hop. Gonna see if he can spot anyone out though. His Q at the ready, forcing the Silas to dash away. Silas still with flash though. Leeson now gonna be coming himself down onto the river. I don't know if he's gonna be, is he's gonna stay? So, Leeson gonna be trying to make the call to see if he can stay here. Gonna, but Sejuani though, gonna be helping herself to those raptors. Gonna be important for IIT to keep that in mind. Uh, Jace doesn't have too much vision. Cass gonna be using a lot of mana to get herself through this uh, early game phase. But do Cass's build tier first? I don't remember. I think so. Cass's first back coming out right now with about 1400. Uh, excuse me, 900 gold to her name. She is gonna be going for that tier. Hey, I still remember mid lane. Yay. Uh. Braum with the relic punch. Is he gonna go for it? Trying to block? I don't think it worked. I hope I hope Jinx got it. Uh excuse me. But uh anyway, the Sej had cleared earlier those raptors, so it's gonna be leaving the least in a little bit behind. Yeah. Sedge actually excuse me, Sedge is gonna be a little bit behind from Lee Sin. I forgot that he uh did a full clear as well, and got the kill from first blood, so that'll help him out. With his first back, though, from that first blood, he's going to be getting himself the Stalker's Blade and the Long Sword and Boots. Um, 
Meanwhile, UCS bot lane trying to again go for that co objective control. Just build up those little leads where they can. And in this case, it's going to be placed with the scuttle first. Uh, gonna be giving it to the Sichuani. Good on them to let her keep up with the XP. That's uh, definitely the correct move. Um, Good D deck though, now completing his blue side jungle. That ground's gonna be spawning. The wolves are gonna be spawning shortly too, I believe. Um, gonna be trying to see how our Jace is doing. He's a little bit behind, actually. Um, his first back giving yielding him two long swords. Interesting. Um, gonna be spotted out by this ward though, so UCF is caught aware. No vision onto the far bush though. Leeson taking a gamble here, trying to see what he can do to help out, but again, that kind of aggression sometimes doesn't lead itself to, uh, to fruition. Rumble doing a good job here with a level 6 ult. If he's able to force it out before Silas finishes level 6, they could go for a full 5, but another level as we're looking at a level 5 Brom versus here, and Leeson spending a good amount of time to try to keep himself in there. Uh, doesn't lead to any results, unfortunately. But, you know, never say never because he's going to be walking right over that. They know that he's in and UCF looking like they want to respond. The lantern coming out. Nice little flash E there to hold it in place. The hook actually landing through too late for Zane. That's going to be likely a kill falling down for him. Misplay there from IIT. Brom had to take the hook. I, he had to, 100%. Uh, either that or you have to have the uh, Jinx flash out. But Goju Didak instantly trying to respond to his own kind, taking the red buff away from the Sejuani. He's going to be looping himself around here. Getting pings though now that he's seeing. Leeson going to be showing himself out here. The uh, Not level 6 though. He's not going to have enough. And Leeson with, and, and Cast with her ult. Going to be preventing any more follow up from that. Pings coming out now for uh, Sejuani. She's going to be coming into a. Uh, a empty jungle, and Lisa gonna be trying to contain this aggression, but he's gonna be facing the uh, Sejuani shortly. Hi there, but you don't have a uh, you don't have a dive yet. Now you do. What are you gonna do about it? The uh, UC UCF Knights will do something about it. Sal is gonna be coming himself over, but he's gonna be staying a little bit too much. Are they committing too hard for this? Lisa gonna be trying to see what he can do, forcing the Rumble. Oh, did IIT know they had that? But Rumble gonna be following up with his own. IIT diving hard for this. Forcing the Silas to flash out, Cast, they are not in for the fight, the flash from the Lee Sin Q, not going to be able to follow up, but IIT looks like they want to commit to this dive. IIT getting the uh, Silas first, forcing the turrets to come in now, getting a nice play there for IIT. Uh, Silas? Nope. Not going to be enough. Uh, I think she tried to hit a rocket. I don't see where it went though, so it doesn't look like it's going to actually end up hitting anything. Uh, well played there for the Hawks, a nice coordinated tower deck to be able to get in and out, doesn't look like they wanted to keep committing for the Silas, um, but however, the, uh, the kill definitely going to be helping, uh, continue to let the Lee Sin take the command of the jungle, um, and continue to CS himself safely, bot lane as well, keeping themselves at bay, you know, especially without the, uh, harass that we saw from the Caitlyn, from the Zyra, Gives them the opportunity to just like only have to be susceptible, uh, susceptible to ganks, and so, uh, and so far the only kill actually going falling in Thresh's favor, so that kind of works to their advantage as well. Uh, IIT put in a nice cautionary ward to try to see if they're going to be looking out for anywhere in the pit. The uh, Nomad's Eye sound coming out, showing that the Thresh has completed his item. Thresh going to be coming out here, putting a subvision of his own, another cautionary ward, good uh, uh, pro proactivity, I guess that's the name for it, for uh, both supports here as they get themselves lined up. But looking at ourselves for the level advantage, we're going to be careful because those Moby Boots on the Thresh are nasty. So going to have to make sure that the Brown's prepared for it. He's still got a ways to go with uh, maybe about another half wave or three-fourths of a wave to go before he can look for level six. But they might not have time for that as Sichuani's going to be trying herself around the tri bush. She's got that level six prepared. Getting Thresh already positioning himself. IIT though, looking like they want to take it slow. They're not ready to fight. Level six now finally coming out for the Brown. Going to help things out in terms of any kind of uh, disengage. Hopefully if they play it correctly. IIT though, looking like they want to do something, but Sejuani's not going to be there, she's going to be going for the Grobs. Uh, Krugs, excuse me. Uh, Lee Sin though, uh, keeping himself. Level 
level six and a half. Fleeson level seven, about a half level ahead. Yeah, if Fleeson is able to maintain the lead, could lead to their benefit. Ah, uh, taking a decent amount of damage there, but doesn't look like it's going to lead into anything. Sichuani's going to be backing. Uh, the Leeson's going to be a little bit ahead in terms of the pacing. That's going to be important to keep in mind. Kai's going to be going for her back as well. IIT looking like they're going to have to try to s looking like they want to be. Staying in lane to keep the wave going on, so that's going to be important information that they need to make sure that they're aware of. So try to push their advantage as far as possible. Rom gets the gist of it, going to be trying to help out a little bit with some of his autos. IIT though, Leeson's going to be pinging out for that, and they actually don't have vision of this. So good transition if IIT is able to get this mountain dragon again. This is where IIT is going to be able to try to see first objective control of their own. The Kaiser W actually not going to connect. So UCF knows this. The smite coming through. Able to secure it though. Well played there for the Hawks, but the wards coming in. They know that something's coming up with the chase. They know that the wards are in. Is the the flag is able to connect, forcing out the. Uh, this could be in IIT's favor. They're forcing a lot of damage, a lot of abilities missed, but forcing the Sesh dive not going to be enough. The, the exhaust, the cleanse, the Brom shield coming in here, clutched. Well played here from the Hawks to be able to disengage instantly after that. Forcing a lot of ultimate, uh, forcing a lot of ultimates, forcing a lot of summers out, but able to walk away unscathed relatively. At this point now, IIT with that information though, going to have to keep that. Uh, okay. Um, yep. Brom there for emotional support. Kai's just going to be looking for a little bit of a one will be one and takes the full front of the Q and W. Looking like a little bit of outclass of the match here, though. Uh, Gosha Didak staying in the mid lane to provide uh, a little bit of sustain for the mid lane as it gets itself going. But uh, looking at our turret, planning only one chick tick left here for UCF, and I don't think IIT is going to be able to cover that itself. UCF trying to do what they can to be able to try to ensure any bit of gold can fall into their favor, but that Rift Herald is getting low. IIT though, doesn't look like they have to drift in what's going on. Eh, no they do, they have a word, but they're not going to do anything about it. Uh, however, that Kai's is going to be right there. She's not going to have to ult, taking a lot of damage. Where's the fucking ultimate forcing the ult? Oh god. Okay. Thank god. Lee Sin, with no kick available, though, he had it on him just coming up now so at least eight six eight seconds behind unfortunately and those kind of timings are important Zayn though with his heal available didn't elect to use it a little bit of a gamble hopefully that shut down oh lord what forcing out the flash no ignite though will be there to ensure to kill for the hawks a ballsy play there from rush to try to see if they can do it but hopefully Going to see if that's going to bite him in the back though with no uh with no flash available. Meanwhile in the 1v1, Rumble holding out on his own with the CS, but he's a little bit behind. Uh, not too bad, hun. Barely anything. Sorry, my fault. The uh Lee Sin gonna be calling cashing himself out with his tribe bush. Forcing the rumble to be closely engaged here. But looking at the ults coming out, a nice flash. Ah, uh, okay. Whatever. I'm gonna pass over that. We'll pass over that. <laughs> rumble having to flash himself over to try to see if he can ensure to kill, but uh, goes over to Lisa nevertheless. <laughs> a little bit of a misplay. Turret plane finally falling though. UCF gonna be looking at their sending their sights here to first tower, and again, the bot lane uh, for UCF continuing to let UCF. Uh, maintain a hold here as they are starting to put themselves towards vision here in the blue jungle. Lee Sin's blue jungle looking like it's going to be spawning soon and they're going to be trading but nevertheless Lee Sin took UCFs so they're okay with that. Trying to see if they can bait out this uh, Silas to follow up here but uh, not going to be going to anything. What? Why are, we, why are we fighting when we know that like our MVP is right here? Uh, okay, getting the hook, a nice line, okay, just, alright. Uh, that's gonna be because of no vision, yeah, straight up. Good attempt, though, for them to try to disengage, forcing four summoners out, good lord. Uh, working itself out, though, getting the kill on Kai'Sa, that's gonna help a little bit. Uh, Jinx getting the Kai'Sa, 450 gold, or is that earlier? That might have been earlier, sorry. Um... However, the style is going to be running himself right in front, though. He's caught unawares. No vision. 
A nice little Q and no Q is going to follow up, but a lot of damage there. At this point, just an inevitability, just a formality. That vision control biting itself back. Hawks still looking like they want to be fighting on, trying to see if they can do, sustain the bleeding that's happening from the bot lane, you know. They are, IIT, uh, UC, excuse me, UCS bot lane definitely looking like the stronger of the two as we've seen now ourselves in the game two of three here with a comfortable 700, 800 gold lead here. Uh, Keen 2 is going to be finished on the Kai'Sa, IE going to be finished for the Jinx, but uh, keeping ourselves here in mind with the uh, Jace here. Not too much to comment on, but the bounty is going to be shown on the Thresh and on the Callista. Uh, Thresh and the Cast, COP, excuse me. The looking like we have a dragon spawning in 15 seconds. It's going to be another mountain, but it's going to be falling. Why are you getting baited by that? Trying to force the kick. A nice ult there from the rubble to try to lead it up, but it's not going to. Doesn't look like it'll be enough. Members of them so low, but I don't think IIT is here to ready to be able to follow up with that. Least in committing very hard for that, forcing UCF to back down, but are they going to try to see if they can press any further advantages? Cass, I know, I heard the ult, so she's not going to have that available. Looking like IIT wants to be playing objectively now, forcing themselves anywhere to the mid lane to get it down to about 2200 health, about halfway done. Cass, not, now without her ult, not going to be able to be able to provide too much, but the Herald going to be placed down into mid lane. IIT needs to be able to transition for this. Jack's going to be pushing himself around here. The Dragon. Gonna get poked a little bit, come out of its nest, but IIT. Uh, Shock Baru's ult not gonna connect, unfortunately. Or fortunately, however you want to look at it. Uh, forcing a lot of damage, but IIT is gonna be able to get it down before it's able to do too much damage. Ping's coming out for IIT, they wanna be engaging. IIT, UCF does not have vision at the moment. Now it's going to be called out as they are making pings from the mountain trade, but that's been leaving Silas to his own devices, looking at the top lane turret. He's going to be able to get it, I think, at the end of this wave, so it's going to be Lisa that's going to be taking on his own pings coming out from UCF as they had the idea, hey, you know, there's been no vision here, it's about 3700, they're going to be forcing it out, but uh, it's going to be important for IIT to be able to try to see if they can contain them within before looking for any approaches, but... Looking like that's going to be enough for IIT to be able to get another hook though. Catching them unawares, catching Jason unawares, forcing the cleanse out. IIT looking like they might want to be re-engaging, but that's Lee Sin Q going to land, but he has the self-discipline to hold himself to not go for it. Uh, UCF trying to see if they can push themselves on here, but... Nice hook there for the Thresh, but that's going to be a full health bomb trying to force him again. That's going to be a tanky Sejuani though. Trying to get the insect on, but it's not going to be enough. Jinx is going to get started turning on, forcing to flash out from Sej. Thresh with another hook coming up in five seconds. Is he going to be able to land any more members? Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Coming up one more time. Is he going to be able to thread it? Doesn't look like they want to engage anymore, though. Forcing out the summoners for the Sej earlier for things. So I think looking like they want to be securing the tower, but it's a, I, I take it back. Getting off that damage. Those the UCF spot lane looking dominant here as they force out so much here. But Rumble coming in with his ult, trying to see what he can do, forcing them inside. Uh, too much too much slap fighting for me to be able to commentate on. It's not looking good for IIT with that commitment. The discipline from this Thresh, it's really on another level. Like, UCS spot lane, okay. Alright, that's the D3 coming out. That's where the D3 support comes out better than the P3 support. Alright, I'll give you that. Yeah, you know, well played there for him to be able to keep things in track, but Lee Sin with his insect now finally at the ready is ready to go for the 1v3. The hook not landing. Forcing himself to try to see if they can stop the tower, but no, that's just selfish playing there. That's just a little Q mentality coming out though. But IIT in charge of a little bit of the having some objective control to Oh Silas, good guy here to block it. But it's all the timing now, so. IIT's got a wave pushing up right behind them, and these three guys are going to have to back out. No TPs available. IIT do, having to make sure that they do the right thing and try to enforce they get this tier 1 tower. Jay's going to be clearing it out. It's only 500, 600 health here. Are they going to force it? I want to see IIT force it. Don't let them push on with any navigation. They know what they're aware of. Don't go for a dive. Finish the turret first. Ready? And yeah, there you go. Okay, so... Uh, he able to finally get that turret in the endo. Losing a lot out on it though. That Thresh Hook definitely being able to help things out. And IIT's bot lane, you know, definitely having a hard time 
uh, in this matchup against their bot lane, definitely showing themselves. ECS definitely being able to show themselves a class above. Um, going to be having to rely a lot on that Rumble and Lee Sin to be able to provide that initiation, engage, and damage follow up. You know, unless the lead Jinx, oh, I, I'm not, I don't see a world in where that Jinx is going to be able to be able to turn on on her own, unfortunately. W going to be cashing out here from the Kai'Sa onto the Jinx though as they set their sights onto the Baron. Trying to see what they can do, but the Vision is going to be caught out here for Wicked Scotty. He's got a control war, but he's going to be taking a while to put it down. Uh, looking like Lee Sin's going to be the good guy here, trying to give it over to the Jinx. Red buff will be helpful for her, but you see I'm caught in a tight, uh, I had to come in a little bit of a tight spot. They're trying to clear out the Vision itself, but forcing the E out on Wicked Scotty here, but Thresh is going to have another ward to place right on top of it. Lee Sin going to be caught by himself here. He's looking for the rush. Oh, good lord. Nice R to dodge out of it. IIT though, with the TP to follow up, do they want to go for the fight? S laners are scattered a little bit, but IIT, Silas going to be looping himself around here. IIT kind of caught in here, the Q not going to land, but Brom going to be trying to follow up where he can, but Silas with his own ultimate is going to be laying waste to IIT's members. A lot of members low here, three, four members, one more auto will do, and Kai'Sa going to be following in some, up instantly, a game changer there for them, but Jinx with the red buff and healthy. Might be able to just do it. Doesn't look like they're gonna follow up with the Thresh again with a miracle hook looking for it. Not gonna actually be landing it though at the end. And that's gonna be Baron. It's gonna be going over over to UCF. Well played from the Knights there to pin it down. Just those small little bits of uh, mi of misplays there for IIT. Rom initiating too early. Jinx gonna be getting launched in with a little hug. Ooh, okay, looking close, but the uh, not gonna be enough though to follow up with Sedge with her dive. Gonna be, what? Oh, okay, she, I thought she touched down. <laughs> I thought she flashed down for a wild second. Good for her to have the uh, flash available, but we're looking at some huge shutdown golds now for UCF as they're uh, a thousand on Kai'Sa, 600 for support. Unheard of, literally. That's literally unheard of. And UCS bot lane this is where they're showing their uh, their skill. Unfortunately, uh, fortunately for the knights, I guess. Seven K gold lane now for UCF as we approach ourselves now into 22 and a half minutes. Another dragon going to be spawning this time. A cloud going to help a little bit out with the movement speed, but not worth dying for for a fight, especially with the Baron buffs available. The Kai'Sa W going to be forcing in Desilwise, trying to see what he can do, but I don't think he's going to waste an ult for it. He doesn't even have ult. And he's going to get shredded instantly by the Rumble Knight. How did he snipe that with no vision? Good lord. Uh, four members of UCF now. Five led by Salas right here in the back. But they're going to be knocking on the door. Oh, wait, excuse me. Thresh is all the way around here. He's going to be looking for a miracle hook by any chance. Any members too close to the edge, but I don't think that IIT is ready to contest that. They need the rebel, they need his ultimate. He's going to be up in 10 seconds, but is that going to be enough for the Hawks to take? Uh, a little bit of mispositioning there could have led to the downfall of it. A nice shield to hold the ult in place. The play not going to be connecting, but IIT missing a little bit of crucial skill shots. So it's going to let them give a little bit of breathing room. And now Rumble is back. UCF doesn't look like they want to, UCF looks like they still want to be continuing the fight. So, going to be important to see if the Hawks are going to be able to win out in this fight. This is kind of their last chance with with almost a 10k lead. You don't got much room for it. Any more rooms for errors. No more Lee Sin insect hero plays. No more missed ultimates. But, UCF doing a good job of keeping the control and getting a nice hook onto the Braum, not going to lead to anything. Pulls the E out early. That's going to be the cast of Sejuani. Meanwhile, uh, th those two taking the Cloud Dragon for themselves. The first Dragon here for UCF. But with the Baron buff, we've got another wave only about five seconds behind. Is IIT going to force the fight? Forcing the ult first with it. Not going to be really landing any members. Getting the play. Not a lot of damage, but at least going to be looking around, trying to force where he can, but the hook is so good. For it. Kai's gonna be forcing herself into there, but it's not gonna be enough for IIT. It's not gonna be enough for the damage. The damage is too much. Quadra kill coming out. Quadra kill only. And the ace itself coming out for UCF, and I think that's gonna be dead.
fast forwarding ourselves just a little bit because uh, you can't see it, but I can. Uh, one more wave here that's going to likely be looking at the first tower. It is going to be falling in shortly. Yeah, IIT had. They had a good early game. They were keeping themselves consistent in the six, like at 1.66 when it, in terms of kills, the least and doing a lot of good things, but I think it's just the bot lane that just had too many misplays at a certain point. Giving those first objectives over, IIT had to fight harder for it, in my opinion, for those first couple of, uh, for that first tower blood. Getting ourselves now into 26 minutes, uh, first inhib down now. Supers are pushing themselves into IIT's Nexus. At this point, IIT gonna have to prepare themselves for the final fight as we saw the Quadra Kill Kaisa come out. She still is the challenge, she still is the head bounty, but even Lisa trying to attempt the diversionary tactics, ever they're watching, they're keeping their eyes out for him, and IIT doesn't look like they're able to do enough. They can't burst her fast enough. They can't burst or catch her out fast enough. Their UCF is playing for that team comp, and IIT is too little, too late to fight for the team comp. Unfortunately, I'm at this point, putting out some cautionary warning, but UCF looking like they're pinging for the Silas. They want to see if they can get him, but Silas is likely going to not take the bait on that. Kaisa Do going to be looking at the final tier 2 turret, going to be shredding that down with ease, look at it go, not even without the mountain. I don't even want to imagine what happens with the mountain, honestly. <laughs> They're going to be seeing the Lee Sin here, he's going to be caught out a little bit with the Sag. Ooh, the Q just, just missing its way on. They're caught in a tight spot, this is a good, usually a good fighting spot, but with the Kaisa so damn ahead. I don't think it's going to be enough. Meanwhile, Sal is pushing it on, trying to force two fronts to have force IIT to address the situation. Ping's coming out. Looks like they want to be settling it. 4 to 4v4 fight. Can they handle it, though? It's going to be the question. 5v4, 4v4. What's it going to be? Shaded Eve. He's going to be staying in the mid lane. There's still too many minions for them to count. And as finally the minions are starting to push in, doesn't look like IIT's ready yet. Forcing to play a nice play. They're going to be getting... The Lee Sin just barely out of the way, dodging out onto it, forcing the knockup onto the Kai'Sa. She's going to be still all healthy, and the dive works successfully in UCS' favor. Using couple summoners, that 1v1 situation not helping itself out. Looking at the 1v1 to force it, oh my god, that health regen is disgusting. Uh, and at this point, it's just a formality. Super minions coming in, looking like UCF has got this game in the bag. Well played from the uh, from the Knights here in the playoffs, and that will be leaving uh, them moving on past round two. And the Hawks, unfortunately, will be the end of their run here for this collegiate Star League JV1 playoffs. And I don't know if that's the end of their season, though. But uh, I think CSL might have a couple more events coming up, and there will be other league tournaments, I'm sure, for them to be participating in. Yeah, just props to their bot lane. Uh, UCF spot lane definitely showing their dominance here. 16k, holy sh. Uh, yep. Thresh landing some really nice hooks um, in that game to be able to. Uh, let's see if I can remember. Yeah, the level 2, uh, 2v2, working out in their favor. The um, Yeah, because the Braum did not take the hook the first one. A couple of those insects that the Leeson tried. Uh, Again, due to the thresh hook for him to be able to not move or the flay to be able to stop him just in time. Um, in terms of solo lane, Cass versus Jace, eh, not too much to comment on. They did their jobs relatively even in damage. Top lane wise, I liked to see the aggression from top lane and Rumble work. They had some good synergy together, working together to take over the uh, blue jungle, working together uh, to keep. Uh, Keep the Lee Sin in pace despite the Sichuani going inside their jungle, and Lee Sin's gonna win out on that no matter what. So, uh, yeah, it was good there, but as they tried to help out 
past that lead. We saw the bot lane taking that first blood tower. We saw the game transitioning itself to the mid game to those 3v3, to those 3v4s. A little bit of IIT communication, especially for that, led to some of those team fights that just slowly and slowly continued to gain the edge until to the point of like no return. Uh, but definitely a much better run than what I saw in the first game with just a complete literally evisceration of the bot lane, uh, getting con objective controls, taking those mountain drakes for themselves, uh, keeping the, the vision relatively in control, um, and that's usually just better, it's a better side for warding. The red side, you can keep track of the blue a lot better in my opinion. Uh, but the Rift Herald itself, um, that was also falling to uh, UCF's favor. I didn't see IIT playing it out for it too much. I really would have liked to see maybe Rumble and Leeson try to go for that. If they wanted to try to continue to press their lead to just dominate the bottom, uh, excuse me, the top and mid, try to let just mid uh, bot lane consist play on its own. But we saw the Leeson hover in the bot lane trying to help out a little bit, staying there, wasting a couple of valuable 30, 40 seconds down there. I don't think it was able to, uh, it wasn't benefit, it wasn't fruitful. They didn't have vision on it, but I think just the uh, game knowledge that UCF bot lane possesses for them to just have the feeling that he was there. They had an idea. I don't think they wanted to be pressing their advantage. They know that their ability to 2v2 no matter what's going to be fine. So even if the, they get the hint that they're trying to bait it out, they're not going to fall to it. So again, good discipline from UCF. Going to be uh, GG's to them. Best of luck to them as they move forward into series to the round three. I think it's now like the top 16 teams. So the first one was 64, IT went that, so they're at top 32, now it's top 16. Um, don't quote me on that though. Uh, I think that'll do it for us today though. The uh, Division 1 game looks like they might be playing it later tonight. If we do, we'll try to get a stream of that. Uh, but until then, be sure to follow IIT on our social media, Facebook at IIT Esports, Twitter at IIT Esports, Discord.gg slash Illinois Tech Esports. Um, Keep in touch with us to follow how our uh, eSport titles are doing. We got League here. We got Overwatch, Rainbow Six, Rocket League. All of the big titles that everyone likes. We even have a bunch of guys that are into Splatoon. Uh, if that's your kind of thing. Apex is going on right now. The teams are playing in AVGL. I'm sure we've got a bunch of those guys streaming the games, as is the rules. But that will be doing it for us today here on the uh, Illinois Tech eSports account. So again, uh, taking going ourselves back so I can just get the scenes right. Go back to this screen, change the score to 2-0. Again, UCF coming out here on top today in March to uh, slay the mighty Illinois Tech Scarlet Hawks. And that'll do it for us today. Um, and yeah, follow us on social media. Until then, this is uh, Illinois, also known as Poxy, signing out.